Father, in the name of Jesus, may every deaf adder be removed out of the ears. Let us hear <laughs> clearly. Yeah. Let us hear clearly what the Spirit is saying unto the church. For we come as yielded vessels. We come as yielded vessels before thee, O Lord. Teach us, lead us, guide us. And we promise to give you and you alone all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And all the people of God said, amen. amen. Clap those hands and give your king some praise. <laughs> Don't you love Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. Please give your neighbor a hug and tell him it came from Pastor Bennett. Give your neighbor a hug. Tell him it came from Pastor Bennett. She may not get to everybody, so she just... Teresa, can you help me out, too, on the keyboard today and on the organ? Help us out, Teresa, if you can assist us. Oh, let's give the Lord some praise. Don't you love him? Hallelujah. I'm, uh, I've got some guests here today. First, um, I should make it known to the house because they're going to be here a minute. I need you to praise God for your brother, Dexter Sullivan. Please stand up, Brother Dexter. Get a good look at him because he's going to be around a few months. Um, he's going to spend some time with us, and uh, this is his summer vacation, so I'm honored and feel uh, very humble that he would decide to spend it with us. Thank God for our guests, pastors, and friends. These are friends of Brother Sullivan, so thank you so much for being with us. We do honor you and appreciate you today. And to all of our visitors, I greet you with the love of Jesus Christ. It is clear that we could be anywhere on a Sunday afternoon, but how many know you need to take a little time out and show God honor and appreciation and coming into the house of God? So I pray I can minister something today. It's, it might feel like it's kind of all over the board, and it's not going to be all over the board. It's just because we are full, and as we are wrestling through the things of this world and the principalities and the wickedness of this world, we're wrestling through it by the word to make things clear. This world is crazy, and sin is confusing and complex, and there's many complexities and twists and ties that come with sin. That's what sin does. It twists you up. It tangles you up. It makes you confusing. That's what sin does. And this is why God said, I am not the author of Exactly. When you start walking and living your life in the things of God, things become very clear. Pathways become very clear. Things begin to make sense. I like to say with my personal experience, I feel like God connects the dots to me. That's what faith is for me. You know, you believe God, you hear God, you got to trust him in prayer. You're giving your heart to him and he'll say, do this. And you take one step and then you don't know where it's going to go. You don't know if anything's going to come out of it, but you do it by faith. And then all of a sudden there's a connection there. And so then there's the next dot. I truly, that's me personally. That's how I see life. That's my pathway as I look for God to help me connect the dots for my life. He is the author hallelujah, and the finisher of our faith. Let me tell you something, you can relax and understand, I didn't call me, God called me, he already knew everything about me, he already knew all my proclivities, he already knew all my insecurities, he knew all of that, and if he chose to choose me, then I'm with God, I'm with God, then God started it, God's gonna finish it, give the Lord some praise right there. Hallelujah. So we are um, going to do our official celebrate sidebar. We are going to do our official celebration of our um, graduates of this year. But I am very proud of our young man. We got our baby, Manny. I know he ain't going to like that I called him a baby. But we got Brother Manny and Brother Jerry have graduated. Where they at? I just saw him kind of cruise in. Y'all got to stand and give it up for Jerry. Come on in. Give him a little love. <laughs> Those are tip babies right there. So we're very proud of them. Fabian, which we did it last week, and Fabian is now gone to the U.S. Navy. What? Give it up for Fabian. Yep. So we're proud of our sons for completing and finishing this one phase of life and knowing that the prayers of the saints are upon their lives and that they will do greater things. You got to love our young people. You got to surround and support our young people. And you have to applaud them for all of their accomplishments so that they know that they have a support system in the house of God. Amen? We want them to know that. So I want to try to um, open up some things in the word today as the Lord has still been dealing with us and talking to us about being vessels of honor. 
and understanding that the battle of sin has already been won. When we give our hearts to Christ and when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, Scripture says that all things are passed away and behold, everything becomes new. That newness is how God sees you. And I really wish, I don't mean no harm, and I, I don't mean no, but y'all remember Bewitch? Oh, good, there's a lot of y'all. And it was kind of cool because she could just twinkle her nose and the whole house would be clean was kind of cool. Yeah, well, we know that's not reality, but honestly, God, that is exactly how God sees us. When God, when we confess our sins before the Lord, and when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, he is so powerful that he walks in and instantly everything is new. Everything is new. And so as we are learning, then what becomes the process, the process then becomes of us learning how to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and, holy and acceptable unto who? See, that becomes the process for the rest of our lives. The process becomes learning how to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. The challenge of that unto God is because this world don't care about God. And this world is not trying to govern their lives according to God. And this world doesn't have the standards of God. Yet we're here and we live here and we have to deal with that. So that becomes the everyday, if I can say, wrestle or process, Lord, I love you so much, of being a saint. I am grateful that along my journey, which it ain't been a long time, but along my journey, I am learning to relax in God. I am learning that, Father, you said all of my righteousness is as filthy rags. So even when I've done my best, it's nothing compared to how pure you are. So let me just take this thing day by day. Let me just take this thing day by day. Let me understand that any temptation, Lord, I love you so much, that comes to me, it's common unto man. But with the same temptation, you got my way of escape. This is all right, y'all. I need y'all to help me to praise him. It is becoming easy. I understand when he said, take my yoke. Lord, I love you so much. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me because all you know are the things of the world. All you know is the, is the functions of the world. You've got to learn me. And that's a lifetime. And I talk about that as a lifetime because I'm talking to people that have walked with the Lord for a minute and people that have just learned their way into God. People that have walked this way in the minute, you know you'll never arrive. There's no rival. Yeah, you'll, you'll be 40 years in the game and find out if somebody treats you wrong, you still might have tongue, will cuss. Oh, you ain't forget how to cuss because you don't got the Holy Ghost. You ain't. So you are constantly being washed, purified. <laughs> True story, it was this pastor. You know, I got a story for everything. True story, it was this pastor. <laughs> And, uh, I mean, he, you know, my, my childhood, an anointed man of God. And so we were in the kitchen talking one day, and he said to me, Daddy, he said, I had a church pay me a check for preaching for them. I said, amen. He said, mm -mm. He said, the check bounced. I said, wow. He said, I saw that S word like a billboard. He said, but I didn't use it. only like 18. I'm trying to be saved. Why are you telling me this? <laughs> so the process of how to present our bodies, Lord, I love you so much. It is constant. And how to present our bodies as vessels of honor. Church, please, let's get this. It has nothing to do with your gifts. Your gifts do not make your vessel of honor. It's you presenting it to God and making choices. It's making choices. I will be a vessel of honor. What has deceived and tricked us for years in the church, and not only in the church, just period, is because we see these amazing gifts, and yet the vessel is doing something totally opposite. 
And so it's confused the world. It's confused saints. It's confused anointed people. And it's because my gift is pure. And my gift will work. But what happens in that vessel is a whole nother thing. God does not repent for giving you a gift. But what you do with that gift and how it's held in a vessel is what becomes the accountability. Because saints in heaven, there are no gifts. There's only vessels of honor. Vessels that have purified themselves. There are no gifts. There's no more prophecy. It will cease. There's no more preaching. We don't need it. There will only be vessels of worship and honor unto God. Oh, give him some praise. Don't you love him? I love the Lord. So this wrestle of what's happening in these end time that we are noticing and feeling, the Holy Spirit keeps saying to me, you have to keep my gospel simple and clear so that a fool will not err. And while sin can come with so many complexities and as if there are so many choices, the word of God remains sure and true. So let's talk about something when we're talking about true vessels. So the, the word true or truth alone, it means being in accordance with the actual state of condition. So true is it is what it is. True is it's conforming to reality or fact. It's real. It's genuine. It's authentic. That's what truth is. It is what it is. You can't change truth. You cannot change truth. Truth is what it is. It is reality. It's factual. It's genuine. It's authentic. And you cannot change truth. Now, what the world wants to do, and I'm going to get to it, is they want us to feel as though there's multiple truths. And like things can be, can be changed or my opinion can become a truth. Now, that's where we're really crazy. Because we feel as though our opinion can even be a truth. My philosophy can be a truth. Nothing is truth but truth. Are we good with this? Okay, let's talk about lies. So now what a lie is, a lie is a false statement made with deliberate intent to deceive. That's what a lie is. I didn't want you to know the reality. I wanted you to see something else. That's what a lie is. A lie is an intentional untruth. Something intended or serving to convey a false impression or imposter. A lie is not real. It's not what it is. Oh, this is going to get good. Lord, I love you so much. It's not what it is. It is not real. It is an imposter. It's trying to make you think it's real. It is wanting to deceive you. It wants to hide the truth. It don't want you to see the truth. It has every intention to say, believe this and don't believe that. Hallelujah. Here we go. The word of God said, here we go, next slide. The word of God said, and Jesus was talking to the, the, the disciples. He said, now, if God, to, to the scribes and Pharisees, he said, if God were your father, I want to talk about vessels of truth and lying vessels. And you got to know that that's which one or the other. There are lying vessels. And then there are true vessels, okay? This is what this world is made up of. And that's why the scripture said, in the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. This is why the Bible said that my sheep know my, and a stranger they will not. Because before the world began, I've already ordained for you to be a vessel of truth. So you might be living a lot of lies right now, but the day will come that I will send the appropriate messenger that will let you hear a truth that will make you escape the lie so that you can come into a vessel of honor. Okay. So he was breaking it down to him. He said, now, if God were your father, you would love me, meaning you would love Jesus and you would love my truth. He said, for I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. So why do you not understand my speech? Now, let me keep on breaking this down. In the infant stage of learning who Christ is, in the infant stage.
stage of finding your way, scripture will sometimes seem very foreign or as if I can't understand it. Church, number one, this is normal, and it's normal for babes to not really get a full comprehension of the word. The Bible calls it the sincere milk of God, meaning you are learning things in the word. Can I keep working this for a minute? I get it, and I can appreciate that there are multiple translating Bibles now. I mean, they translate. I, I keep joking, and I say, I'm just waiting for the Ebonic translation. Like, there are so many Bible translations, and mind you, if that's what you need to get your initial understanding, I get it, and I appreciate it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But the greatest teacher and translator of the word is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the translator of the word because it's speaking of a language that you don't know, that you can't comprehend. Why can't I comprehend it? Because my mind is carnal. And until my mind becomes more spiritual, I cannot understand the things of God. So Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. He said, if you really knew who I was, then what I'm saying wouldn't be difficult for you. You really understood that I am coming from my father and my father sent me, then you would understand my speech. He says, So now, even because ye cannot hear my word, ye are of your father. Talk back to me. What did he say? Don't be afraid. What did he say? Ye are of your father. Do that a little strong. Y'all, is he me? The devil. Let's do that again. Ye are of your father. When you do not comprehend the truth, when you cannot and you struggle with comprehending the truth, when you have no understanding, void of understanding the truth, these are signs. These are signs that you are of your father, the devil. Now, I feel very free to be able to minister this because there's nobody on my mind, but if we don't teach the truth... So that we as people of God can understand the clarity. He said, ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do. You don't have truth in you because you can't be both. So again, so for us that may have been walking with Christ for a minute or for us that have been in the game for a little while. This is why there's a constant process of purifying ourselves because I'm constantly working my way to be a vessel of truth. What do you mean by working your way, Pastor? What I'm saying is that many of you already understand it, but just to break it down, because I'm coming out of a lifestyle of a lot of lies. Yeah, I've been living a lot of lies. And so I, it's a process. This thing ain't going to happen overnight. I've got to get in this process of allowing God to bring me more into the truth. Now, let me tell you the comfort of that is that God is my help to come into the truth. So when we do receive the Lord Jesus, I'm just going to deal with my own story. So when I, I gave my heart to Christ, and I, I, y'all know my story, and it was a pretty rough teenage life, and blah, 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 and I did a lot of stuff, and it was in a little small town called Columbia, Maryland. They all knew me for being crazy. They all knew me for being a pothead. They all knew me for all this kind of stuff. Well, I went to a summer one day, we went to a summer <clears throat> back to Detroit. God gave God in my heart. He literally, the day I gave my life to Christ, God literally walked things up out of me. I never went back to those things. All right now I'm saved. Well, I go back to school. I'm saved now, but they didn't see me all summer. So I go back to school and we all hanging around. Here's our posse. We're about to get together and skip school like we always did and meet where we got to meet like we always did. Go to the skip house. Y'all know what that is. The parents that ain't home. Yeah. Go to the skip house. <laughs> I don't know what the kids call it today, but anywho, <laughs> So he's saying, you know, all right, time, you know, we'll see you at fourth period, whatever it was. I said, no, I'm good. And they started laughing. Girl, you're so crazy. I said, no, I'm good. I'm going to go to class. Now, here's the thing. I had lived a lie. You know, Pastor, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know I was chosen. So all the getting high, hanging, all that I was doing is because I was under the influence of a lie that God didn't want me. God hadn't called me. There was no assignment on my life. So I'm doing what everybody else is 
is doing, I'm living this lie with you, all right? But I come into the truth that the hand of God really is on my life, that there's a calling, there's a destiny, and all that that you're doing, you don't need that no more. I have called you for something greater. So they say, come on, because they know the lie. <laughs> but I'm living in truth now. Come on, Dan, you're going to say, no, I'm good. So finally, one of the boys said, hey, hey, did you get that uh, church saving thing? That's how he called us. And I was, now, you, now you know when you're newly saved, all you feel is they see the light. <laughs> and I said, yes, yes, I got saved. Yeah, all right. And they bounced. We never got together again. We never jailed again. And you know why? Because the world only received their own. And they realize you ain't in our lives no more. I need some praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. And so the discovery is I'm living a lie. God's promises and blessings were always ordained for me. The devil told me I would be hung out for the rest of my life. The devil told me I would be this way for the rest of my life. The devil will tell you poverty is the way it is. The devil will tell you your daddy was in prison, so surely you're going to be in prison. Somebody say, no, that's a lie. That ain't for my life. Do y'all know the quote, the devil is a liar? You better say that. The devil is a liar. Here we go. Next slide. So he said... Satan is a murderer. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. None, church. I know this could seem very elementary, but I got to lay this foundation for where we're going. There is no truth in Satan. None. None. He will never be your friend. He will never hook you up. He will never make everything all right. He doesn't have the ability. He is a bald-faced liar. He's a liar. And everything he's trying to tell you why you don't need to give your life to Christ or why you don't need to surrender or leave the, he'll say the church, but he's really talking about God. He'll say the saints get on your nerve, but he's really talking about God because he knows if you stay too close to the truth, you really are going to be set free. I need some praise. Oh, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Saints, the hour now is we got to become concrete in that. All kind of sin and laws and things are being passed and they'll speak so eloquently and people will present it so professionally and they'll have so many statistics and things to back it. And in your mind, if it is contrary to God, you got to say that ain't nothing but a lie. I'm going somewhere. Come on. He said he's nothing but a liar. And he birthed the spirit of lies. Father means the seed, it came from him. The seed of lies came from Satan. He said, and because I tell you the truth, you don't believe me, which of, of you convinceth me of sin. And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? This is what Satan wants to do in the end time with the church. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the breaking of the saints. Wants us, Lord Abasi, Kiela Shandala Lobaha. The sin and the deception of sin and the confusion of sin. He would like us to preach until it's nice. He wants us to preach where all people can be accepted. It ain't gonna never happen. It ain't never, there's never gonna be where everybody's gonna accept the truth. Because the father and Satan's kids will come to the church to defy the truth. I want y'all work with me because this is, I got a little ways to go to finish this. He said, so, he that is of God heareth God's words, and ye therefore hear them not because you are not of God. What I'm trying to say is, as the Lord, you know, Paul said, he said, you know what, I can't just, preach to you. He said, I got to eat it myself lest I be cast away myself. So whenever God, 
When I feel my own self like Satan feels or, or I'll feel uncomfortable or like I don't want to really say it like this, I can feel the Holy Spirit check me. He's like, no, 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 no. I'll give you wisdom how to say it, but you better say the truth. Yeah, I, I'll help word your mouth with it, but you better say the truth. Or else you are not mine. You can't play with a lying spirit. And you can't make a lying spirit think it's okay. He says, say nothing or wait till I give you the wisdom how to tell, but don't you agree with a lie. Next slide. Jesus said, I am the way. Only one, everybody. Be crystal clear. Be crystal clear. Be crystal clear. He said, but one way. There's only one way. He said, and it's by me. I am the way. I am the, meaning I'm genuine. I'm authentic. I'm the real deal. I am truth. He said, and then I am As many choices continue to speak themselves in the earth, as many philosophies drop their opinions in the earth, as many false teachers twist scriptures for their convenience to seduce you from the truth, what they're not going to be able to do is give you life. You won't find life. You won't find joy, authentic joy, authentic peace. Hallelujah. You will not be authentically healed of your mind. You will not be thoroughly whole in your spirit except you embrace Jesus as my truth. And it's got to be said like that. Jesus is my truth. Ooh. I was driving and I, and I wore a lot. And my family members and people that's close to me, they know I kind of like, it, I don't know that I've checked out, but I check out. I don't know that. It's because I, I wore a lot. And I wore spirits and thoughts and words and I wore a lot. And then it's like the Holy Spirit within me is going back at it to teach me how to war because we're not wrestling with what we see. And so the other day I was in my car and just spirits and I'm warring and I'm talking to God and I'm praying about the spirits I hear and, and Father, and I feel the enclosement of Satan's tactics and things and I feel it and I feel the enclosement like suffocating, like, and I'm saying, Lord, and, I, and then all of a sudden one of my sons came on, um, victory belongs to Victory belongs to him. Hmm. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. And he comforted me. This ain't your battle. Victory belongs to him. It's already won. Victory belongs to him. Can y'all say that with me? Mm. Victory belongs. Jesus, you already fought this war. The enemy is already under our feet. Victory belongs. The battle's already won. We've already got the victory. Woo! Again, again. Jesus, victory belongs. You did it, Jesus. You already paid the price, Jesus. It's already done. It's already done. So he reminded me all the victories in Jesus. He said, don't get it twisted. Don't be overwhelmed. It's already done. Victory is in Jesus. I need praise right there. Right there. Just a little praise. He says, so no man can even come to the Father. There is no other way for your soul to be set free except through Jesus Christ. 
is our only access to the Father. Here we go. Next slide. And we know, and ye shall know the, uh-huh, everything that's genuine, everything that's real. The only real truth is Jesus. The only truth that is documented, that has been proven, and that have stood thousands of years, the test of time, is the word of God. And there will never be anything new. There will never be any type of, I don't even know what to say, that can happen that will make the word null and void. Never. Everything we're facing today, there will never be an incident that can happen in earth I can't find in the word. Because the word remains reality. Uh, the word remains reality. He says, so you shall know the truth and it's only Jesus truth that can make us. Here we go. Now, my little children, and I'm going to try to fast forward, and I'm going to try to take my time, and I hope I can just leave you with something solid. It is the last time. And as you have heard that the Antichrist shall come. And even now, are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. We gotta embrace it. We gotta fall in love with the truth. We gotta let truth make us free because it will be our clarity to know when an antichrist is speaking. And what he's telling me is if we don't in, fall in love and accept the truth, and the Bible said if it were possible, perfect, he would fool the very elect. But the elect can't be fooled because we love God's truth. Are y'all with me? Are you with me? These new pop-up things, these new anybody can preach, these new doctrines, these new churches that are attempting to sweep our millennials and our young adults, which then challenge seasoned saints, almost vex them, that you could believe another truth. And the Holy Ghost is saying, don't let them think it's disguised as something else. You got to call it what it is, and it is the spirit of an antichrist. It is the spirit of an antichrist. Here we go. He said, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth. But I won't know it if it's not taught. I won't know it until it's made plain to me. He said, but because ye know it, that no lie is of the truth. Keep on working it just a little bit. So who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is Christ, he is antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. So let's get educated. Without calling out religions, you already know some that are. That anything that professes a salvation or a level of prosperity or freedom or a level of healing, if it is not coming through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, if it's saying there's any other route, be crystal clear, call it what it is, it is an antichrist. When you debate and refuse to believe it, don't get caught up in foolish babbling that will vex you. Just know you must be of your father, the devil. Because only the children of Satan will believe a lie. I need y'all to work with me, come alive with me, grow with me. The problem is that if we as leaders, Lord, I love you so much. If we as leaders and messengers of Jesus Christ, if we do not, keep ourselves at the altar and in humility of weeping before the face of God, we too can be swept to believe a lie 
teach a lie rather than the truth. I need somebody say, that's why I need another dose of the Holy Ghost. And give them some praise up in this house. Give them some praise. And so that I see, Kian de Loba, Sean de Loba. So the necessity of the Holy Spirit sweeping through our houses and filling us again, it is a must. Because baptize me again so I can be reminded hey, of the truth. I need some praise up in this house because I need a river to flow. I need a river. I need a river because that devil, I need a river. I need a river to, I need a river. I need a river. Clap those hands and tell God yes. Help me to tell him yes. And so our spirit. My soul is saying yes, Lord. My soul. My soul is saying yes, Lord. So this. Oh, yeah. Oh, river of life flow out of me. River of life. River of life flow out of me. I told some people, because this thing is getting so real, it ain't fun. And these demons are bold. These demons have no shame. These demons are recruiting. I know I'm telling the truth. And you sitting back like you scared. The devil is a liar. Give me another dose. And dip me with boldness. Give me another dose. Oh, and let it come out of my belly. Clap those hands at the box. I shared it in our minister's classes. They're twins. And I've known them since they were young girls. They're twins in the Holy Spirit. And they love the Lord. And the Lord, there is a beautiful anointing on their lives. Well, it was this video of them praying for this man of God, this prophet. And when they laid hands on the man of God, he began to roll in the Holy Spirit. And, and you could tell the anointing was all on him. Now, you know what? I saw that and I put all kind of hearts by it and I said, I love it. You know why? Because y'all can laugh at his rolling, but he going to get up telling the truth. He going to get up prophesying what thus saith the Lord God. And if it takes me rolling a little bit to fill me with enough power to come against every false spirit, then rolling is what I'll do. If it take me purging a little bit until I'm slightly embarrassed. But if I get up with an anointing to tell you the truth, then purging is what I'll do. Open your heart and tell God yes. Clap those hands and tell I say, hey, hey. Ain't no shame in my game. I do what I gotta do to get power. I do what I gotta do to get an anointing. But whosoever deny the Father the same have not the Father. Oh, I need somebody to cry. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He said, but whosoever denieth the Son, the same don't have the Father. If you want to know the pressure you're feeling, it's because you are a vessel of his. And this warfare that you feel is being surrounded by Satan's children. That's what you feel. 
as you're trying to remain this vessel of honor. And they push 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 to try to make you believe a lie. And they push and they influence and they talk about it and they campaign it to make you believe a lie. You just need enough Holy Ghost to roll out and say, mm. I can't wait till the college campuses get about 10 young people crying, oh, oh, Jesus. He said, and he that acknowledged the son, he hath the father also. So let that therefore abide, see, 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 it's got to abide. Because we're going to constantly be challenged. You're 50 years old, been in the game 30 years, and you still feel the challenge. You feel the false teaching. You feel these false images. You feel these impostures that have come up against your anointing. And there are times that you're just going through something. It's not that you don't love God. You're just going through something. That's when you got to let the Lord know, get this care up off of me so I can handle this enemy. Yeah, I got to get this set, this demon straight. Don't get it twisted. I know who I am, and I know the hand of God is on my life. And I might be going through something right now, but I ain't going to believe your lie. Hey! I know he's going to beat me out all right. Hey! He said, and he that acknowledged the son hath the father also. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you. You got to water that truth. You got to water that truth. Ye also shall continue in the son and the father. Let me keep breaking it down. Church, let me just tell you about monitoring your vessel. Honoring your vessel. This is why, again, you can't mix your vessel with a whole lot of lies. I'm going to just keep it real. Is it okay? Is it okay? Is it okay? I can't mix my vessel with a whole lot of crazy secular music and secular stuff. I got to tell you the truth because it's got too many lies. It's got too many <laughs> I thought your amens would drop just a little bit. It's too many lies in it. It's too many. It's too many. I, I, can't, why, I can't do a lot of that science fiction that's just a straight up bald faced and lack. I don't even want to try to make it. You know, I got a lot of stories. There was a girl one time. <laughs> this woman I worked with in sales. This quote stays with me today. It was a woman I worked with in sales, Carol Bate. Hello, Carol, wherever you are. She was a fine African-American chick in San Francisco sales. She was ruling things over everything all of San Francisco. Carol was fly. Carol was chic. But one day we were talking about a situation with somebody, and it was crazy. The person, and we going on, and I kept saying, I don't know what made them do that. She was saying, yeah, and we kept, and then I said it again. What would make them do She said, Tamara, honey, I don't get up in crazy people, man. I might get stuck there. When you surround yourself and you keep taking on too much lies and foolishness and foolish talk, baby, you better be careful because you might get stuck there. If you're a vessel of honor, I can't take but so much of your junk. I can't. Your junk is just too much. It's just too much. I get stuck there. He says, so these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Yeah, this enemy ain't coming boldly. He's smooth. He's smooth. And they'll start with simple things. And when you keep saying they, Pastor, who is it? Baby, I can't even put a nail on one because there's multiple demons. There's so many false mess out today that that's why he had to say they. Come with their seduction, when they come with their smoothness, when they come to deliberately make your truth that you know a lie, when they challenge the truth that you live, when they challenge the truth that you speak, when they challenge the truth that have created your morals and your scruples, that have become your, your compass for life, know you are of your father, the devil. He said they come to seduce you, but the anointing. Hallelujah. I see a hand clap right there. But the anointing. You would have got me, but the anointing. I was dipping a little bit, but the anointing. But 
that the anointing which ye have received of him, hey, yes, Lord, it abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. Because the anointing is a teacher. The anointing is a teacher. In the house of God and as we're going after the things of God, we have to make the anointing a priority. We've got to make being filled with the Holy Spirit a priority because it is the teacher of... I'm not going to be able to access no DVD and Google a message. I need a message in my own soul to teach me as I'm talking to this enemy right now. Oh, I need some praise right there. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth you, and ye need not any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is, what is it? And is no... Even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Everyone standing to your feet. This truth that the Lord is saying, just a little worship, the truth that God is saying, he said, now, the first truth is when you accept what I say about you. And this is what I'm talking about with my own personal freedom, church, my own personal freedom. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get moved but what people think of me. I honestly don't. I honestly don't. I am deeply concerned how the Father sees me. Because the Father is truth, he said, having a conscience void of offense towards God and man. When you're striving to walk in God's truth, his truth will teach you how to work with everybody. His truth. And when he tells you you didn't do that right, I'll have foolish pride. Go make it right because I got to stay in his truth. Do y'all see what I'm saying? That's the way you begin to train yourself in the anointing. Your training of the anointing, it starts with the truth he tells you about you first and accept it. And it's okay. He got you. God's got you. The growth of that will then teach you how to discern good from evil, right from wrong. So it'll be in the simplest things that he'll bring a truth. Now let me say, how do you test it? Because I obeyed what I heard him say, and I saw the positive results from following his truth. Can I keep talking about truth? Sometimes truth can be embarrassing. Sometimes truth can even be hurtful. Maybe who you got to tell, I got to tell you the truth. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. But what the truth will always bring is freedom. It's going to always bring freedom. Truth is going to always bring freedom. And where are we working ourselves towards? We're working ourselves towards being free agents in Jesus Christ. Do you hear me? This is where we're going, Lord, I love you so much. Lord, I love you so much. Lord, I love you so much. There is a liberation that happens when I embrace his truth about me. I'm not obligated to my pastor. I'm not obligated to my husband. But because his truth works in order, yes, and because his truth honors each other, it's going to automatically give me honor with my pastor. It's going to automatically give me honor with my husband. Are y'all listening to me? But above all, I'm free to be used by him. Come on, church. Come on. I'm free to be used. 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 Okay, let me tell you my high. My high, and it's a real high for real. My high. Oh, man, my husband and I were talking about it today. Because I truly know and believe the scripture that he is the potter and we are the clay. And that we are on his will, and it's him that molds his will, this, his will, his potter's will, that he's molding and he's making us. Yes, 
yes, into a vessel that we have no idea, but the, but the wheeling is cool. Yeah, yeah, the getting the oil or, or, or having the water of his spirit come down on me and shake me again. And then when I do things that are not pleasing and I feel my insides cracking and I bring it unto him, he can bust me down and then build me all over again. I don't mind, Father, as long as I'm still on the wheel. I just won't get off the wheel. I'm not going to get off the wheel. Mold me, make me, shape me. Whatever you got to do, I know in the end I will be a vessel of honor. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. So my high, I told my husband, I said, I, I got it. I got it. I'm a junkie to see what God's going to do for people. I'm, I'm a junkie. Like no matter what a situation looks like, I just see that as a broken vessel. Oh, my God, when they get on the wheel, let's see what they're going to be. Let's see what kind of gifts are going to come out of them. Let's see what kind of marriage and family and prosperity is going to be on their life. I need some praise. Come on, church. Come on. Now, this is what the church got to get ready for, and I do mean the church. And I mean it, church. What we got to get ready for is that it don't take God a long time. Thompson, we got to get ready for it. We got to get ready for it because the hour is late and because he's so soon to come. And where it would have taken 20 years for some of us to come into some things, for some God can make them transform in 20 months because the hour, so we got to get ready for that reaction. Are y'all working with me? Where you may have went through all these multiple steps before you came into your ministry. Some God may snatch up and immediately put them in their gifts and their callings because the hour is late. There is no better story than Ananias and Paul. And Ananias is a priest in the house of God, a man that have dedicated himself to God. And here was Paul and Saul, a murderer and a blasphemer and an injurer. And then one light knocked him off his beast. I said, why are you persecuting me? He's like, what are you talking about? He said, it's me. He said, what are you doing? And when Paul got the revelation, man, you coming after the wrong person. And when he sat in the desert and allowed God to teach him, and when he had to go to a man named Ananias, three days, he was fasting and praying and blinded. Three days, God sent this man named Ananias to move the scalp from his eyes. This is the story God told me. He said, Tammy, there are some people that will come into this ministry. He said that they, you are only their Ananias. Remove the scalp from their eyes. They're going to do greater works than you have ever done. Paul did greater works than Ananias ever did. Our hands are lifted to the Lord. We're sending a call out to you today, to you, my brother, my sister, that Satan been making you live a lie. He's been making you think some of your struggles are just the way it is. He's a liar. He's been making you think that the hard times that's been coming on your life, that it was inherited. He's a liar. He wants you to think that some struggles that you have is just going to be the way you are for the rest of your life. He's a liar. I'm coming to speak truth. The hand of God is on your life. I'm here to speak truth that before the world began, you are on the heart and the mind of God. I'm here to speak truth that God have already chosen you and have assignment for you. If that's you, I want you to come now. You're coming quickly. You're coming quickly. How do you know it's you? Because God has a thing called godly manner that while you're in your sins, he's dealing with you. I need some praise as they're coming. I need some praise as they're coming. I need some praise as they're coming. I need more praise. I need more praise. And I need intercessors and ministers quickly. Quickly, quickly come. Quickly come. Stand with them quickly. Quickly come. The devil is telling you a liar. That demon that says once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic, is a lie from the pit of hell. You will be free and free indeed. I need some praise to go up. I need some praise to go up. That demon that's telling you that you're just like your daddy or you're just like your mama, you'll never have nothing. I need somebody to help me. That's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. God said you got life and I got a life for you that's abundant. I need praise to go up. I need more praise, more praise, more praise, more praise, more praise. The harvest is coming, more praise. The harvest is coming. There are demonic strongholds that the devil will make you do 
and he'll bring those flashbacks, flashbacks and make you think this is who you are. Tell that devil you are a liar. God is getting in my mind and he is transforming my mind. I'm ready to give him my life. I'm ready to give him my heart. I'm ready to give him my soul. Make me a vessel of honor. I need praise. I need praise up in this house. I wish I had some believers. I need some believers that remember when you first came to the altar. I need some believers with a real praise. What a real praise. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Fall on me, fall on me, fall on me. Yes, the Lord, your anointing. I need you, Jesus. Fall on me. Let the power, the Holy Ghost. I want you, Jesus. I want you. I want you. I want you, Jesus. Please, please let it fall. I'm in need of you, Jesus. I'm in need. I admit I need you, Jesus. I admit I need you, Jesus. I admit I need you, Jesus.
Just a little bit, just a little bit more. Just a little bit, a little bit more. Come on.